Weeding out. Um, I called, when I was a graduate student, my profession was communications, was as, as a cinematographer, okay. Um, it was a class, and I, with my advisor, we, we set up a class for filmmaking. And many of the people we got in it were teachers. They weren't going to be filmmakers. So my comment was, do we weed, weed these people out? And one of the things I says, well, we only have one camera, the Airy BL, and we get that from uh, uh, communications in school, and they have to know what they're doing with it. I would say I will show them this is a light meter. Everybody understand photography. We, we got a light meter here. Hmm, what's that? Oh. We got a light meter. And um, one light meter, folks. Unless I might use a photographer. Turned out, oh no, they weren't. They, they were teachers needing to take this, fulfill this course for their degree. And this, this was an easy degree, you know. Thing. Okay. The course was easy. And I told them that uh, if you're going to be teaching film, you should get yourself an, an AC, uh, American Cinematographer's Manual. It's called A Filmmaker's Bible. And you, what you do with this, you, you read through it. Because these students, you've you got students that may, their parents may have bought them an, an Airy BL or a Claire or Bolex or uh, and that thing, and you may want to also do the same thing we're going to do. This is a light meter. This is how it works. This is what it does. And you got, you got the little filters, and you got that. Yeah, and the light meter is $150. My, my light meter is $150. And it comes, comes with little slides. And uh, we're going to be shooting black and white film. And uh, everybody gets gets to learn how, how these things. What we have here is a Airy BL, and we're going to show you how to load it with film and what size that thing. And and all the emulsion for the camera, in the camera, the emulsion is, goes toward the lens. Now you can do it the other way, but it's going to get muddy. And, it, you know, you basically you're teaching them how to handle a camera equipment. And what the advantage is, uh, I happen to have access to Jack Barron's, um, and I could bring in cameras from there. We have the school, the university had an Airy BL. Uh, I forget his name, the guy, uh, the guy with that. But then I, then I could bring in other cameras. I could go to a rental house, being a student, I could go to a rental house and get, get the cameras for the weekend. Uh, for the class on Saturday, yeah, and that thing. Did I weed out students? I told them that you're going to pass this course if you fall asleep. <laughs> okay, we, we pass everybody. We pass everybody. But I'm really serious on this thing as you're going to be teaching this in school. You want to get certain things uh, ahead of time, like the, the uh, manual the filmmaker's bible and you want to have to understand the a lighting meter because somebody some student may come in with a lighting meter i want to say well if your school can afford 150 dollars for a lighting meter go get it if you if your school can afford 150 dollars for a director's uh go go do it you know, that thing uh, and this is what things are right now from moviola and this is what we have, or this is what I have, of making a filmmaker. And uh, that's it. This is a synchronizer. With all the things, this is our movie scope. This is what. This is how everything works. And that and basically was a filmmaking course. Did I weed out anybody out? No. Was I ever weeded out any course? I took a physics course at as a graduate student, and. Um, yeah, and the teacher said he, the room was filled with students. And he, um, 
I was there, and I said, I, I told him, well, one, I'm a graduate student. I took your course. I signed up for it, but I won't complete your course because maybe six to eight weeks, uh, I will be swamped at work, and I won't get, because it always happens, you know. Sometimes I finish a course, and most, many times I just don't, but I, I get too swamped at work, so. Oh, you're a graduate student. Yeah, yeah. Never tell you know. I've never taken a physics course before. Mm. Mm. But he said he had this room full of students, and he said I was I was loaded. And I have to, I have to weed people out. I told him I'll be back there. I won't t need to touch anything. I, I got the book, and I can go along with that. And at a certain point, I'm going. I, I was. I, I never finished a course. A lot of my courses I never finished because of work at when I was working at Kraft. Yeah. Um, that thing. Now, uh, when I was a graduate student uh, to, at Governor State University, I always attended those things. And I, since I worked in a in a warehouse, big difference. But. I um, knew somebody at Kraft who was a PhD student at, uh, graduate student at uh, Purdue University. And I also talked to the professor at Purdue University. Uh, he was at one of our meetings. But he walks, he said he walked in there in the freshman class and 400 students in, in the class. He filled them up to the rafters. Yeah, signed up for the course. And so the instructor hands out this test. Every student has a test, you know. They get through the thing and fill it out, right? And he said, okay, uh, you finished the test. Now I'm going to give you the answers. If, if you don't have at least somewhere 70% of those answers right, this is not a course for you. And we're going to get a test next week. And it's going to get a lot rougher than this one. So, basically half of the students, 400 students, half of the students never came back. Now that's weeding out. That's a good purpose. It's lab work. The next week, you have another test, and half of those students leave. If you don't get half of this right, 60, 70 percent of this way, it's only going to get rougher, and the tests are going to get rougher. Now, weeding out a lot of disadvantaged people out there, they're saying, well, you know, the, the blacks are not that smart. No. <laughs> Most of the blacks I know have PhDs who are smart. Or the Latinos are not that smart. You know, they want to be in chemistry. Yeah. But they're not that smart. So you lower the standards coming in. How do I know? I'm one of the idiots. A bell curve. You know what bell curve is? I'm at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you... I can tell you no, some of my tests I took nineteen seventy yes nineteen eighties I took chemistry nineteen nineties I took chemistry and uh one of the one of the instructors asked me um how, how do you do in your tests? Okay, I can do the, the periodic tables and things like that, yeah. Uh, do I understand a lot of it? This is, it's over here, but, but why are you taking this class? Because I like lab work. You know, that's, that's why I, I take up chemistry. I like lab work. Because then I can excel. Can I excel in the book that's that thick? You ever read 2,000 pages on a book, first edition? Yeah! 
<sighs> that's that thing. But weeding out is Purdue. They, the guy said he got in the classes, and by by the time the class class basically started, there was, you know, in, in the lab, we were bunched into a lab. The, uh, the professor, since we were going to the university, the professor that they they made extra lab lab time. So, but basically, you get rid of a uh, out of four hundred, maybe. Th 350, uh, 325 leave because it's only going to get a thing. And you can't, can't really, um, you can't really, you want to get the smart ones in. Okay. Not so smart like me, uh, you will get the different type of course being taught, as, as it said. Yeah, and if you're going, going for your graduate degree, uh, you're going to have to write a paper for, for folks, and you better be able to prove it. You've got to do the research. And if you're on the doctoral level, you've you got to do the research on this doctoral level. And he was hired at Kraft because he had a PhD in a field. They even got him a very expensive machine to set up, unit, and he did. And then he sat. But, there, that's what weeding out. You get the ones that are really not going to make it, or really are going to have a rough time. Uh, and I had a rough time. I've always had a rough time. And um, oh, I know I I know why I have a rough time, but at that time, a rough time, and uh, got weeded out. Yes, I I tell her I had one one organic chemistry class uh, where. Uh, a first test, I said, gee, that looks familiar. Okay. And the second test, which I filled out, filled it out, that looks familiar. And then I said, I wonder. So I go back to the th three, three edition back from the, uh, the chemistry book, and yes, sirree. Um, so. The net before the next test is I bring from from the book I copy from the book and I, I went went to the professor and I said um, you're you're about to give us a test is this your third test he said yes where did you get that out of the edition how did you know about that is it because I took the course. four years ago. What? What do you mean you took, took, took that course four years ago? Yeah, I'm a professional student. What? I am a professional student. I've taken, you see that, you see that golden book up there? That's, that's from 1969. I took that course. Why are you in my class? Because I like lab work. I work for Kraft. I like lab work. I'm not going to. I'm not going to be able. To, I, I understand this. Well, how did that? Because I remember the test. Well, that's that's how I get that. So you, if any of these other students can figure this one out of back thing, I wish they change the test. Now. That is that is pretty rough. That is pretty rough. Now I knew somebody at the, one of the city colleges there that were ACS members, and uh, he said he was taking organic chemistry class for for the nurse, nursing program. And one of the things he told on his first test he had, um, you know, chemistry so and so, and he listed the name of the book. On, on the top top of the page paper, and one of the questions was, name the chemistry book of the, for this class. <coughs> uh, 
<coughs> he said maybe three quarters of them couldn't put down an answer but it's the answers at the top of the page one of the other courses questions on the future tests on the periodically tables there happens to be a great big chart on the wall and he asked for the the element iron gold silver you know what are these now you've got big chart on the side of the wall all they have to do is go over there look and read it because it's all there he said most of the students couldn't do that then he asked the questions where where is the periodic table in your book it's on the front cover they couldn't do that either and he was told by the dean of the school you are to pass everyone in that class but they're illiterate doesn't make any difference you were to pass everyone in that class I did it says why they're gonna become nurses they very likely will never never mix anything or do anything and in, in, in your chemistry class, the physical chemistry lab classes, we will bring in a couple TAs in that class. So the students who are mixing anything do it correctly. We don't want any accidents. And he said, very safely, everyone wears a lab coat, everyone wears glasses. And with proper time, everyone wears gloves when you have to it says if you want to stay in this class everyone wears safety glasses but again all, all my key all my classes all my chemistry classes uh, when I graduate school I bought my own my own glasses I didn't use what was possibly sitting over there. I went out and bought my own glasses. It's like when I bought my own Merck Index book, which I had to have in that thing. And one of my, uh, Ron Brubaker, Dr. Brubaker said, you really want to get this class, right? I said, yes, I want to, want to take this class. I want to take science classes. I took a class on how to use an electron microscope. Yeah, I could play one fun and optical microscopes and biology and this and that class and extra classes, extra extra curricula. Because um, I, I knew, you know, it's, it's really what weeding out, I didn't want to get weed out of that class. So I, I made sure that I stayed and I studied and I studied and I studied. Even though I got D's in the class, I studied and I studied. Um, because I know this that that at graduate school that was the only time in that I will be able to be in a lab. Uh, said there's no way I way I would nobody was going to hire me in my la in a lab. What happened? I got hired. <laughs> I got hired. Yeah, but I, when I walked in the thing I, where I worked at Kraft, they said the guy asked me did you ever use yeah i use all this stuff in graduate school you know i got all the balances and all the all the thing um all, all the work um i told him uh, you know doing acid tests then you know you got a probe for this stuff yeah you know you got metler i guess metler is it metler no nah, this is no Met Met Metler was balanced. This, this was something else. But I guess, you know, you got to pro probe for that. So, yeah, you, you do acid tests. You just stick stick in the probe and it gives you the, your pH and the, um, that thing. Oh, that's great. But um, weeding out, this, it's a real problem in schools at, at, at Purdue. When you have 400 students, you don't have the lab space. So you got to weed out. You got to 
But then, of course, there's this minority problem. Uh, minority students want to do this thing, so what you uh, do is lower the standards for them. You have, a, at Purdue, the guy said, they open a second class for the ones they wanted to get into the science field. And since they're there at Purdue anyway, somebody's footing the bill for them. Um, we have extra classes uh, taught by TAs out there. Um, they say, yeah, I, he, say, he said, I, I taught some of those classes. Um, but basically, you see, the professor says, it's going to get worse. And they did this stuff in graduate school, too. It really got worse because you got a smaller type of stuff for graduate students. All totally different from undergrad students. A different operation. I handle equipment that I could never have handled as an undergraduate. When I was at Northeastern, I handled equipment as a graduate student, not as an undergrad. I took nuclear physics, nuclear chemistry, nuclear biology, and I got access to some of the other stuff. And the same thing at graduate, in, in the level as a graduate student at um, GSU. As a graduate student, um, you got access to stuff, you know. I had my own electron microscope <laughs> in my slave. <laughs> yeah. And they got to say, well, you know, I, I can take take things home if during the week and bring the stuff back. You know, that's that's things you do. Um, it is is really it, it is really rough. It's really rough. And um, I had a water chemistry course, and the oldest person was sixty something. You know, it's a graduate student, and the youngest one was sixteen years old. He was the son of a professor, and he was basically, of course, majoring in chemistry. And he said, yeah, he's going to high school at the same time he's taking all these college courses. Oh, it's, oh yeah. Let's talk, talk about feeling rather stupid. Oh, yeah. And he says, yeah. He says, yeah. Um, by, t by the time I get out of high school, I will have had taken uh, most of my college courses here, graduate graduate level. Uh, he goes, I'm I'm going to skip. He said he's going to skip undergrad. Most likely skip undergrad. You know, as they say about undergrad courses, a lot of dummy courses. Why? To keep a lot of dummy teachers employed. Mm-hmm. But that's what weeding out is all about. It's uh, really, you know, weed out the under, undergrad people. And they're, they're saying, well, hey, well, we get all this minority people. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I know. Well, I tell you one thing right now. You know why I got my where I got where I got craft because I didn't have a science degree. And I happened to do is my, my boss at Kraft was in one of my classes. Because I was a TA, they needed somebody to be a TA that had, so, and she, when I walked in there for, for the job, she was interviewing me and she looked at me and says, don't I know you from somewhere? Well, I don't know. And she really looked at me, and she really like, "Do you know so and so?" And I say, "Yes." You're with Jerry Rich. Why are you here? I need a job. 
You got a master's, right? Yeah. Why are you here? I need a job. Mm. But that's thing about my weeding out. And he says, well, okay. I expect great things from you. She got them. Yeah, 12 hours a day, 7 days a week. Yeah. 